Hello, I'm Scott, the Senior Content Manager with the International Screenwriters Association. Usually I'm coming to you to talk about screenplay formatting, which is something that I geek out on. I, I like to talk about that a lot. Uh, but I saw something on television just this past week that I thought this is a good opportunity to talk about the importance of nailing your elevator pitch. Your short and very concisely crafted uh, 90 second, what is your story about? Why is it interesting? Who are the characters? What is the plot? One of my favorite shows that's on the air right now is The Righteous Gemstones. The second season just finished up and uh, one of the most amazing actors on it, Edie Patterson, who plays Judy Gemstone within the show, was recently on The Late Late Show with James Corden. And he asked her, hey, for anybody that hasn't seen the show, could you explain what it is? So let's take a look at what she said. It's about a family of televangelists, very successful televangelists, uh, and they're patriarch, their, their father is the patriarch of the family, as is usually. <laughs> um, and he leads their big church and they're very, very successful. And I am uh, his daughter, Judy Gemstone. And um, we're just all doing our best. <laughs> okay, so, and I don't wanna come off as though I'm picking on this actor uh, who is one of the greatest elements of this show. She, her character is so absurd and she pulls it off with such a plum. So I definitely don't wanna come off as though I'm picking on Edie Patterson here. I know she didn't create the show, but at the same time, she is a consulting producer on it and she has written an episode in each of the first two seasons. So it's not as if she's just somebody that walks up to set does her time and leaves. She's definitely a part of this creative team. The ISA has a ton of information out there about how you can craft your elevator pitch and put together your log line. There's gonna be links to a bunch of videos at the end of this video here on YouTube over on pro tips and tricks within the ISA Insider page. And we do have a TV pitch pilot contest that's uh, open right now for submissions. The top finishers in this contest get to pitch to a panel of executives and oh yeah, it's free to submit. So really for the ISA, as always, it's all just about trying to support writers and help get good ideas in front of good executives that might be able to help you take that next step. So let's take a quick look at what Edie Patterson said and try to improve upon it a little bit. Again, Max Tim is the director of education for the International Screenwriters Association. I am not that guy. I'm not gonna say, this is how the pitch should be written. But as somebody that loves the show, The Righteous Gemstones, there's so much more that could be said. So she didn't say in the moment that it was a comedy, but James Corden said it's one of his favorite comedies on TV. So that has been established, even though it wasn't part of this little moment. Uh, but that said, the idea of comedy brings up a lot of different images to a lot of different people. So that's too vague a word. Is it a horror comedy? Is it a slapstick? Is it a romantic comedy? What is it? Well, it's a dark comedy. So right away, that puts the listener into a whole different space on what exactly the tone of the show is. Also, she mentions twice in this uh, short amount of time, she repeats herself that it's a very successful family of televangelists. Uh, and that is important, but we don't yet know the reason why it's important. The reason why it's important is because she and her siblings have grown up completely wealthy. And because of that, they've never had to kind of grow up as individuals. They're basically a bunch of middle-aged kids in adult bodies. which is really one of the most unique aspects of this show is that the main characters are kind of, they're totally unrelatable because they are so infantile, even though they are grown adults at this point. I think if you have John Goodman as part of your cast that you want to point that out. She mentions the character of her dad, but she doesn't mention it's John Goodman. And of course, if you're pitching a concept, you don't necessarily have John Goodman attached, but you could still say a John Goodman-like character. So that is a nice uh, shorthand. In an elevator pitch, you can use that kind of shorthand to say a Morgan Freeman type of character because it really quickly puts in the mind of the listener who that character is. Um, and just as much, she should have mentioned that Danny McBride created the show. You know that there's going to be some infantile humor. Uh, there's going to be some vulgarity. It's not going to be G-rated. Uh, but there's still going to be some very unique characters. And really, it's going to be about immature characters finding themselves way in over their head in some seriously dangerous or suspenseful situations. It's kind of funny when looking at all the different types of comedy that you think horror comedy is the most serious, but no, dark comedy actually takes away some of the slapstick silliness that horror comedies have and can have some legitimately scary, tense times where there's no comedy involved at all. And this is definitely one of those shows. So the last thing I wanna talk about is the fact that she is not the creator of the show. 
that she is a part of this creative team. So maybe you would let her off the hook a little bit for not having an elevator pitch just completely nailed down. However, I disagree with that fully. As we talk about so frequently, a log line or an elevator pitch has to be good and strong and clear and concise because the person you're talking to then has to repeat it without you being there so that they need to be able to convey that vision and what makes this project exciting because your concept is constantly being sold up the ladder, up the ladder, up the ladder until finally the person that can say, okay, here's the check. Uh, now let's go, which is why you have to have a clear starting with yourself. Imagine you are working on a sizzle for a movie or a TV show that you've developed. You're going to have a crew of people there. And even though they aren't the creators of this show, they care about what they work on and then they talk with friends about what you're up to lately and you never know who they might talk to. So if you can have a clear enough vision that you can pass along to your entire crew of people, whether it's your leading actor or a grip or the property master or the greens department, transport, whatever, everybody wants to have pride in the jobs that they're doing. They want to have pride in the project they're working on. And if you can convey what the story is to all of them, you just never know who they might tell that person that a crew member or a cast member might talk to might be looking for the exact project that you are in the process of trying to promote. So for all those reasons and more, you want to get your pitch down. You want to get that 90 second. Here's my amazing concept combined with unique characters. And of course, the pitch has to be not just informative, but entertaining. Again, the end of this video is going to be full of tons of resources where you can learn more about creating your logline, creating your pitch. And when you're ready, head on over to networkisa.org go to the contest section, navigate over to the TV Pilot Pitch Challenge, and when you're ready, click enter now. And hopefully I'll be able to join you and watch as you pitch live to a panel of three industry executives.